we are about to tackle something here so big. I mean, it felt brave to even attempt this subject, our emotions. Kate recently got married, my, my daughter, and I remember we were out to eat and she just started dreaming and talking about moving somewhere fun. And y'all, I about started weeping at the table. It hit me so hard and so fast that I couldn't fake it. I tried, I smiled, I listened, I nodded, but inside my heart was racing. I felt like I couldn't breathe and I was about to weep. I headed to the bathroom and I knew I had to compose myself. I'm like, wait a minute, she's married now. Of course she might move. We don't, we don't know what and where our kids are gonna go and what they're gonna do. So I knew that, I knew that intellectually, but I was hit with this wave of emotion and it overwhelmed me. And I knew there was way more to it. All of us daily are hit with waves of emotion. Now, some of you aren't feelers. Some of you are approaching the study, you got roped in and you think to yourself, I don't know that I feel a lot of emotion. This study is for you. This study is for you if you feel like the waves are coming constantly and you can't seem to work it out. All of us are hit suddenly with emotion. We have to figure out what it looks like. Now, let me tell you a little secret that I've learned. When we get hit with big emotions, like I did at dinner with Kate, there's usually a reason for it. There's three places that we feel emotions, that we experience them. The first one is we experience it in our lived experience. So from our past, many times, what happened to you when you were four years old is still with you. It comes to mind, your memories are triggering an emotion. You also experience an emotion in your physical body. Your heart will start racing, your shoulders maybe tense up, you feel like your stomach's a little bit upset. Maybe all of us are different about how we experience it in our body. And then the third way we experience our emotions, and this is the most common, this is the thing you're most familiar with, you definitely notice it when someone else responds to you in a negative way, is our reactions, right? We get really mad um, and our behavior hurts someone and it comes out sideways. Somewhere along the way, and maybe it was from things I learned in church, maybe it was from the way I was raised, I learned I wasn't supposed to feel sad or angry or scared. I was supposed to be okay. And so every time I would experience sadness or fear or anger, these emotions that I, I learned not to feel, my brain just wanted it to stop. My brain would attack it like, like it was a disease or a virus that just, it would attack it and judge it and condemn it and tell me why I shouldn't feel that way. And I really never gave myself permission to feel what I actually feel. And then in turn, I haven't given other people permission to feel what they feel. I know we're all coming at this subject from really different places, but hear me loud and clear, whether you're a man or woman, whether you're young or old, whether you're a big feeler of wild feelings or someone who just doesn't wanna feel anything, if you're a stoic man in his 60s that swears he has never cried, or if you're a preteen girl who can't seem to ever quit crying, we are all feelers. We may express it in a million different ways and, and we may try to hold it in with a few ineffective techniques, but, but you and I all feel because God built us to feel. And over the past few years, as I've been learning to listen to what my emotions are trying to tell me, I've, I've found this truth that has shifted everything for me. Feelings were never meant to be fixed. Feelings are meant to be felt. For so long, too long, I didn't grasp this. I didn't like what emotions did to me. And, and if they were to blame for anything that was just uncomfortable or, or painful, then I didn't want to name them. I didn't want to feel them. And on this journey that we're about to take, we're gonna talk about how we lost our connection to our feelings, how to find it again and how to feel, really feel the way that God planned us to feel and built us to feel. And we can learn how to lead an emotionally healthy life, we can. And no matter how mixed up and tangled up you feel right now, this is possible. From the time we were little, We've been hearing messages and being taught how to deal with our emotions. When you feel angry, oftentimes your parents would correct you or tell you not to be mad. And when you felt 
sad. They would say, you don't need to be sad. Look at how much good is happening in your life. We were taught how to deal or not deal with our emotions. And so we start this lifetime of denying ourselves permission to feel what we feel. But we didn't know we were also denying ourselves the truth of how God created us. If you think back in your memory, the, the moments that, that you remember from your childhood, your, your moments that, that you felt incredibly happy or incredibly sad, the reason that you remember anything that you remember, it's because it was tied to an emotion. All of our memories that last, that live on with us in our bodies and our minds, it's because it was tied to an emotion. When you experience happiness, when you experience sadness, it, it grabs your attention in a way that just a normal mundane day that you're not feeling a big high or a big low doesn't. That means that all of our life, all of the parts of our life were defined by emotion. The best parts and the worst parts all equal the sum of our lives. See, we are beings created in the image of God and He is a God who feels all of these feelings and He created us to feel them too. But somewhere along the way, these messages that, that our parents told us to take care of us, out of love they said these things, but, but it also came from the church. And so we began to shut down and, and really believe that emotions are dangerous. There's messages that, that I've heard from the church and I've heard from so many of you things like, don't let your feelings control you. Don't trust your feelings. Just trust God. Or Jeremiah saying that the human heart is deceitful above all things and beyond a cure, asking who can understand it? And I get this because we all know following our feelings can lead to a lot of destruction. And it's certainly a familiar practice that a lot of us have, have experienced in our life or with people we love. And feelings minus God's wisdom can absolutely lead to a completely selfish life and all in the name of your feelings. And I know we're dealing with a world right now that says your feelings are all that matter. And yet the, the church has said your feelings don't matter. And I don't believe that's biblical either. Let me be clear. You will never be emotionally healthy outside of the will of God. Just like your emotions were designed by God, the patterns and the ways that we are to live and thrive were also designed by God. You were built for obedience and you're most happy and fulfilled in the midst of it. The fall, it messed everything up and I know it broke for many of you. It feels like your emotional health. It feels like it's so hard to, to imagine a day without feeling anxiety. The fall broke so much of God's plan but I do believe we can rebuild a healthy view of our emotions where they're not controlling everything, but we notice them and heal from them and share them and allow them to serve the purposes that God built for them to serve. So what are we to do? Over these next six weeks, we're gonna study what the Bible says about our feelings and about our emotions. And, and whether you follow Jesus or you don't have a faith at all, or you're somewhere in between, I'm just so glad you're here. And maybe you're like me and you wonder, okay, well, what does God say? What does he do with his emotions? And what does the Bible say we, we can or should do with our emotions? And are our feelings sin? That's something that we have to answer for sure in these weeks together. And so we're gonna answer these questions and more by seeing how God feels throughout scripture. We're gonna see in Genesis where he feels happy at all he created. He feels disappointment at, at Adam and Eve when they rebel and he feels anger when they keep rebelling. And he feels delight when Abraham and David and others follow him and have faith. And he feels sadness when, when they go their own ways and, and disobey. He feels compassion toward mankind as he gives them every chance to come back to him. And the prophet Isaiah referred to Jesus as a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. This is how Isaiah referred to Christ. He was a man of sorrows. And Jesus, we see that played out in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was so troubled and afraid that he sweated drops of blood with what was coming the next day of the crucifixion. He knew and he asked his father for another way, a path out. Scripture says that we can grieve the Holy Spirit even. So, so hear me, emotions are not bad because 
The Trinitarian God, all three, you see throughout scriptures that they feel all of the emotions. So emotions are not sin. We can rule that out right now. In fact, emotions aren't even neutral because God has a purpose and a plan for your emotions. They're actually good. And not just some of them, like peace and joy, but all of them, sadness, anger, fear, they're gifts. Ephesians says this, that in our anger, don't sin. So there's this idea that that in our anger is fine, but the not sinning is where we get into trouble. That's assuming that we all feel anger. Anger is a legitimate feeling that, that can be sanctified. We get to choose whether we sin with it or not. But feeling it, that's not the sinful part. We get to choose who we talk to about it and what actions we take with it. And one choice goes one way, giving the devil a foothold and the other one connects us to God and to each other. It can bring truth and reconciliation and growth. It can, it can bear fruit. Something good can be born even out of anger. In fact, anger can have a goal that is holy and we get to choose which way we're gonna go. There's an ultimate goal for sadness too. For those who have felt the depths of grief, this can be hard to believe. And it, I know it's painful to think about sadness as a gift. Yet God, the Father, has set out a plan for sadness from the beginning. Guys, all these emotions are good gifts given to us by God. I wanna say up front to those of you that feel like you're struggling with depression and anxiety, this is a safe place for you. And I want you to know that in large part, the church hasn't known what to do with, with mental health. And I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry if the church in any way has hurt you in this process because there are some things that we can't control. The fall has brought a fall of everything, our bodies, our, our minds, everything fell. And so, yes, for some of you, it, it isn't as simple as just thinking differently or just feeling an emotion and healing from it. It may feel like you really need help. You might need a counselor. You might need to visit a doctor. And I just wanna say that's okay. And I'm certainly not saying that what we're gonna do here together is going to heal you of something that could be chemically just really difficult. In our family, we are familiar with mental illness. And so you're safe here. But I do believe that this process we're gonna talk about, it can help. It will help. Maybe in partnership with a doctor in medicine or maybe in partnership with counseling. The vision, this process that we're gonna talk about, it works for those of you that are feeling all the feelings and it works for those of you who have never, feel like you've never felt a feeling. And I wanted to do a process because it can feel so chaotic, our emotions, it can feel so big. And I wanted to just lay this out in a way that felt helpful. And God is going to help us again to find this healthy way. We invite him into this as we are going. But if you feel like you're overrun with emotion, I'm gonna help you slow down. And I'm gonna help you take each feeling apart and to notice it, to name it, and to know what to do with it. And if you feel like you haven't felt feelings in a while, I'm gonna help you notice them and name them as well. And God will help us in this process. It feels ironic, I know, to try to build a process around something as nebulous as feelings. And yet God is a God of order and the enemy loves chaos. And I do believe that this book lays out a healthy way for us to process our emotions together and with him. I wanna prove to you how necessary your emotions are to the relationship with God that you have, to your connection with others, to, to parenting, to work, to every part of your life having a healthy emotional life, it shapes every part of our life. And together we're gonna to explore how to move from emotionally stuck to emotionally well and whole. From apathetic to being able to actually articulate how we feel in a way that connects us to others and doesn't distance us. And in a way that takes us deeper with God. I remember when my husband, who for many of years of his life, he wasn't very emotional, I remember when when he came into feeling all his feelings, I remember looking over to him at church and he was just weeping, worshiping God. 
And he told me after that, he said, Jenny, I don't think I've ever wept worshiping God. I was missing this whole part of my soul because I had, I had killed off all my emotions and believed they were bad and dangerous. And yet in healing all of his emotions and feeling them all, his relationship with God exploded. And all of a sudden where it was just a rote conversation, possibly even a religion, all of a sudden his heart woke up and he felt that connection in a deeper way with God. And we know feelings aren't necessary for that, but man, they play a role. God built them to play a role. I know all of this probably seems a little bit big and impossible, and I want you to know this is coming from a very personal place for me. I have seen this happen for me. I have seen this happen for me, and I've seen this happen for people that I love. Some of you are gonna feel wildly comfortable running into this subject, bearing your soul, thinking about these things. Some of you are gonna be so uncomfortable. You might be like my husband who for so long felt like these emotions, he just didn't even feel them. He didn't even notice that he felt them. Wherever you are, I just want you to know that you are safe, that there is compassion for this journey because it is messy. I wrote a book called Get Out of Your Head. And when I did that process, it was a little cleaner. <laughs> you can control your thoughts, the choice. You can, you can interrupt your thoughts. But this, feeling our feelings, not fixing them, it kind of feels like the ocean, just going out to the wild sea and, and hoping and believing that this is going to lead somewhere good and beautiful. It will, it will, because this is how God built you. <laughs>